Hello, welcome back to the cave. Welcome back to the channel. I was supposed to go back to Saudi yesterday because I saw the surgeon on Thursday and I'm actually booked in for a procedure next Thursday. Procedure under general anaesthetic. Um, uh, therefore, I'm stuck here in the UK, which is um, obviously no bad thing. Uh, but what it does mean is um, I'm not going to be at work for a few weeks and therefore I'm going to be away from the bench for a few weeks. But that's fine because I did bring back a, uh, sat in my cupboard over there, I brought back a uh, riveting kit and uh, a couple of bits of airframes that I'm going to do some riveting on. Um, so I've got the Airfix B25. I've already riveted the fuselage for that. Um, so I need to do the wings and the tails. I'm going to be doing that. And I've also brought back with me an Armour Hobby uh, Wildcat in 72nd. So I'm going to be doing that as well. Because I really fancy a little Wildcat in uh, Royal Navy colours. And I may well even do a, a Operation Torch um, to match my other one that's in the cabinet. Beautiful kit. So I thought I'd do that. <clears throat> I've also obviously taken delivery, as you would have seen in the first unboxing video, of the new Armour Hobby P39 and 48 scale. So I could even do that as well. We shall see. See how I get on. That's the bench kind of update. Um, channel update. Uh, two unboxing videos have gone out. The main one, when I got back. And also, that was... Um, when did I do that? Last Friday, I think. And uh, a week ago now. And um, the other day I put out a, a bonus unboxing because I got a care package from Ammo by MIG. And uh, yeah, some interesting um, stuff in there, including a kit. So if you haven't seen that, um, you can pop over and watch that one. The Edward Mustang Royal Class Sprue Tour went out. Beautiful looking kit. Can't wait to get my teeth into that one. Um, so you can go and check that sprue tour out and, uh, yeah, uh, so lots going on on the channel at the moment. Project update wise, um, notwithstanding all the riveting that I'm going to be doing, it's really quite dull. So, um, it'd be so nice to get a load of bunch of that out of the way. Right. I keep, oh, I keep changing my mind on what I'm going to be doing next when I get back. Uh, I am acutely aware that the last kit was the Spitfire from Qatari and uh, stuff I want to do very soon is I've got the two laminar flow design 48th conversions to do uh, to Mark 14s. Really excited about those projects, although st uh, still keep prevaricating about what schemes to do for those. Um, so there's those uh, and uh, I've got the JP in 72nd and I've got the Dora Wings Norseman. And I've also got the 30 second scale Spitfire conversion to do. All those, uh, it's very Spitfire heavy. Um, so I think what I'm going to plan to do, so that's what, three, I've got four Spitfire conversions that I want to do. And I've just done the Qatari Spitfire. What I don't want to do is release five Spitfire videos in a row. So I'm going to mix them up with the JP and uh, the... Norseman, which hopefully should be a fairly quick project. That's the plan. Right. Um, just before I um, go to uh, and have my procedure on the shoulder, I'm going to go down and see my mum and dad. And on the way, I'm going to go to Antics um, in Bristol, see my mate Andy's, where I get um, most of my kits from. Uh, and I'm going to pick up a couple of Tamir Spitfire Mark 9s. Uh, one's going to be uh, both for laminar flow design conversions. One's going to be for the Mark 5C, um, which isn't ready yet. The other one is, in fact, it's just here. Now, this is the Mark 12 conversion set that Matthew sent me. And the more I, I I've always kind of dismissed the Mark 12. But the more I look at it, the more awesome I think it looks with that short, powerful nose and the clip wings normally I don't like clip wings on spitfires it kind of ruins it 
but I think because the nose looks quite powerful with the clip wings, it, it really does look like an awesome, mean looking aeroplane. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to take one of the, or might even take both Mark 9s back with me if I if I can fit them in. I don't think I can. I think you can only fit one in, but I'm definitely going to take one back with me with this. And I'm going to use this as a practice for the Laminar Flow Designs conversions. Uh, because this is going to be by far and away the most straightforward one. And actually, I really quite fancy the look of that. Now, Jadlam, uh, which is, uh, if you're not in the UK, Jadlam is a relatively new sort of model shop, toy shop type thing. They're doing a group build for the Airfix 48 scale um, Mark 12. And uh, they're running a group build slash competition. And you can win vouchers uh, i think top prize is 100 pounds worth of jadland vouchers to spend in their shop um and i had thought of doing that and then i thought well to be honest um if i'm gonna have a, a mark 12 in the collection in 48 scale i'm gonna wait for matthew to do the laminar flow designs conversion and i'm gonna get an edward mark 5c and i'm gonna do that that is going to be my plan um but they're they're fifty percent off the kit, the Airfix Mark Twelve. I think they're twelve ninety nine or something. So even if you're not going to do the group build, uh, and you fancy a, a a cheap Airfix Bitfire, pop over to Jadlam and get one of those. Uh, right. So that is uh, that. But I'm really excited actually to to do that, and I'm going to do one of the schemes that Matthew's got um, in the box. Um, I'm going to use the Mark Nine Spitfire because it's twenty quid cheaper than the Mark Eight. Um, and uh, the initial batch, the batch one of the Mark 12s were based on the Mark 9. So I had the Mark 9 wing with the um, fixed tail. And I quite fancy one of those, I think. Um, <clears throat> there we are. Uh, which means that, so what, what I'm probably going to do first is I'll probably, um, I'll probably do the Dora Wings Norseman first. Um, to get back into the swing of things when I get back. Uh, then it'll be this in 30 second scale. Then I'll do the JP and then I'll do the two 48 scale kits and that might take me up to Christmas. Um, in fact, that will take me beyond Christmas. And then we'll see what else comes out. But there we go. That is the kind of bench plan at the moment, as always, subject to change. Uh, right. <clears throat> The news, lots going on this week, uh, and one very, very exciting thing to talk about, which I'll save to the end, which is cool. So first of all, Airfix have um, uh, re-released um, three new kits. The one that jumps out to me, uh, which is sat in my cabinet over there, which is one of my favorite kits in the cabinet, is the Chipmunk has been re-released in three new markings. Uh, Portuguese, the all over red one, so the Royal Flight colors one that um, King Charles learned to fly in. Uh, and an Irish Air Corps version. I think that is a stunning kit, not without its quirks, shall we say. Um, if you do have that kit and you're going to build it, what you must do is remove the locating pins for the wings, because if you if you line them up, it actually bows the wings to sort of curve down like this. It looks really weird. Um, so cut those off because they're misaligned, um, and glue them flat. But what that will result in is um, the wingtip will be kind of like this, overlapping. So you've got to sand this down. So that's a bit of a faff, and the cowling is a bit of a faff. I wish someone would um, produce a single 3D printed nose that you could just whack on the front. Um, <clears throat> that would be fantastic. But anyway, that's the FX Chipmunk, one of my favourite kits ever. Trumpeter have uh, announced their 72nd scale Avenger is out very, very soon. Uh, lovely box art, actually. Uh, that kicked off a bit of discussion on the Facebook page um, about trumpeter accuracy. You know, why don't you get the Hasegawa one? Uh, well, the Hasegawa one is over 30 years old. Um, it's a nice kit, but it's very basic. Um, the, a couple of other ones were mentioned um, that I can't remember. They're not really on my radar. But actually, the Trumpeter Avenger 
um, and the Hobby Boss in 32nd and the Hobby Boss 48th Avenger are actually very nice kits. Um, <clears throat> uh, very accurate ones. Uh, that sort of A team did those. So I get good vibes for the 72nd Avenger and I'm actually severely tempted by that myself. Even though I'm trying not to buy kits at the moment, it's very difficult for those. Oh, excuse me. Um, I am coming down with something. Right, um, ICM have uh, released more CAD details on their MH60. Is it an L? Yeah, MH60L Blackhawk in 48 scale. And that looks amazing. That looks really, really cool. Um, I'm severely tempted by that. I'm wondering if res kit are going to do the wings with the extra drop tanks on. If they're not going to come in the kit, they're not on the CAD renderings. Um, <clears throat> so maybe they're they're purposely leaving them off for a future release, or maybe they've spoken to res kit out there in Ukraine and um, they're going to leave a few bits for them to do. I don't know, but that look really cool with those kind of shoulder mounted um, winglets with the big drop tanks on uh very cool uh, and a really long that's the international symbol for a really long refueling probe uh that looks cool um severely tempted by that as well but the big news the big news that got announced yesterday at e-day in edward's presentation was edward next year are releasing a 132nd scale Mustang, a P51B slash C. So the Razorback Mustang in 48th. Clearly, well, not clearly an upscaled 48th one that they've recently uh, released because it's a lot more complicated than that. But clearly they've taken all the research that they've done and they're going to bring out a 32nd scale Mustang, which is really exciting. Now, they did hint that they were going to be dipping their big toe back into 132nd scale. The only one that they've done, their own moulds, is the um, BF109E. And that's quite long in the tooth now, actually. Still a beautiful kit, and they still release it every now and again. The BF108 wasn't their mouldings. Um, that was from a uh, company that they bought the moulds off. Um, so really exciting to see um, see that kit. Now, I made the... No, it wasn't the Razorback. It was the Bubble Top, was it? I can't remember which one it was now. The Trumpeter one I made when that came out. I can't remember. I think... I think it was a Bubble Top. Um, but yeah, really exciting to see that. Um, um, but am I tempted? Oh, do you know what? I'm not entirely sure I am. Um, very, very exciting release. Um, I've got the space for it, um, but it's just the subject for me. P51B. Um, I'm yet to buy. I normally rush out and buy every brand new molding that Edward bring out. Um, I normally buy a Overtrees and just stick it in the stash. Because the moulds wear quite relatively quickly. Um, but I haven't for that. Um, I don't have a 48 scale P51B slash C in the stash. I don't actually think they do the overtrees yet though. That might be the reason. Um, but yeah. Uh, I may well, I'll, I'll probably get one. It's going to have beautiful surface detail. And... Um, it won't have an engine, but they will do the brassing engine for it in due course. I'm sure that's not going to be cheap. But I don't really like all exposed engines and panels and things like that anyway, um, which is why I was very excited about the Qatari one when that came out. Where actually, you know, they, they did do the engine. A lot of people squinnied about the price and said it should have an engine. But, you know, when you bear in mind that the, the Tamiya Mark, sort of the Mark 9, and I'm... I'm about to buy that's that's over 100 pounds it's like 110 115 pounds something like that and that does have an engine and the Qatari Spitfire you can get for 80 90 pounds and it doesn't have an engine and that's a beautiful kit 
but they're a lot smaller company and that that whole crap that went on social media about the Qatari Spitfire not having an engine and it's 80 90 pounds and people said I'm not going to buy it at that price well don't buy it then no one's forcing you to buy these things um but it'd be interesting to see how much this this is going to cost uh, and and where it sits alongside that obviously Edward are a, a much bigger company they're going to sell more of these than Qatari will early Spitfires for sure um so I don't know maybe what 65 70 pounds something like that for one of these i think would be reasonable i, I would say um but hugely exciting uh anyway um <clears throat> there we are um i'm in danger of starting to ramble now i uh, got to the end of the news um not really a bun uh, bench update um yeah really looking forward to actually getting this sodding bloody shoulder fixed uh and then um you know don't knock it i'll take the extra time at home of course i will but um but to get back to the bench uh will be uh quite exciting actually because i've got a lot of exciting things coming right i'll leave it there thanks very much uh for tuning in um now i'm going to be at home for at least another sort of two three weeks um and uh, i'm going to wrap my brains to see what extra content uh, I can bring to keep ticking over. The Qatari Spitfire project is going to keep ticking along. Uh, next one goes out tomorrow. That's construction. And then the painting and weathering and finishing the week after that. So next week. And then that's it for projects. I've got nothing else in the in the, in the the can for that. Um, <clears throat> I might choose to do some of my um, kits from the cabinet series while I'm here. I could do that. Um, and produce some extra content for you there. Right, I might do that. Okay, I'll leave it there um yeah i'll keep the ear to the ground uh, for the industry news and bring that to you as well and i'll see you soon so cheers bye bye